शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा वंदे गुरुपरंपरा we are in verse 10 and we were looking at like we are in kathopanishad part 1 chapter 3 verse number 10 and we are looking at these two verses oh ha ah. vignana sarthiryastu मन प्रग्रह वानर सो ध्वन परमाप्नोति तद विष्णु परम पदम एंड दोज पीपल हु आर हु हैव इन्वोक देयर इंटेलिजेंस हु आर एज द एज द चैरिटियर एंड एंड दे हैव ब्रॉड द रेन्स अंडर कंट्रोल रेन्स मीनिंग द माइंड दे हैव ब्रॉड देयर देम अंडर देयर कंट्रोल सच पीपल alone can go beyond the samsar meaning the senses which are continuously running after the world of names and form and other uh, sensory perceptions they are co- controlled and as a result uh, a person is able to transcend this sansar the path of samsar and such a person uh, comes to the vishnu pad paramam padam comes to the ultimate the the transcendental transcendent goal which is called paramam padam the highest goal the highest destination where is this highest destination this highest destination is only at the individuality level what you have done you have used your intelligence it is the nature of the senses to get involved in the world so when intellect is discriminating properly then automatically the horses come under control you stop running your senses stop running after their sense objects see and as a result of this up only such a person who has brought about this integration by proper understanding by proper control of the uh, of the reins by proper control of the mind only such a person can uh, reach the vishnu padam vishnu padam again vishnu padam means uh, no it is it is the high, at the when the mana buddhi chitta ahankar when they are completely integrated completely purified then you reach the vishnu padam then you transcend the wish what is the wish sansar is the wish sansar is not an object to be indulged in sansar is the wish sansar is poison 
and we want all blessings only for maintaining the sansar either and then when you come to this vishnu padam when you look at it from vishnu's point of view what do you see everywhere you will see only vishnu then there is no sansar once the river merges into the ocean then what does it see it sees only water everywhere it doesn't see any <laughs> river it becomes one with the total and that is the vishnu padam the individuality vanishes and we we have already seen this one then where are we 9 10th indriye we, we did this word did we didn't do the bhashya for this isn't it indriye byapara hyartha arthe bhyascha paramanah manasastu para buddhihi buddheratma mahan parah compared to indriyas meaning meaning the senses uh, the vishayas are uh, vishayas means the sense uh, the sense objects are the sense objects are a greater greater higher pervasive compared to the uh, uh, compared to them compared to the sense objects the mind is higher greater more pervasive subtler and uh, higher greater subtler more pervasive than the mind is buddhi arthe beshya paramanah manasastu para buddhi so higher greater subtler more expansive is the buddhi compared to the mind बुद्धे आत्मा महान परा आत्मा दस दैट इज इवन मोर परवेजिव दैन द बुद्धि एंड दिस इज वॉट द भाष्य इज टेलिंग हेयर इट से आई एक्सप्लेन दैट टूडे ऑल्सो वील लुक एट इट अ बिट मोर स्थूला तवद इंद्रिया तानी यही अर्थ अर्थ आत्मप्रकाशनाय आरब्धानी तेभ्य तेभ्य इंद्रिभ्य स्वकार्य ते परा हि अर्थ सूक्ष्म महंत महंत प्रत्यग आत्मूता सेज इन द टेन्थ वर्ड्स दैट इंद्रियाज अर्थ thul sthul means sthulani tavad indriyani the indriyas what are the indriyas the eyes the ears the nose the skin the tongue the five senses they are sthul they are gross tani yehi arthai arthai hi atma prakashanaya arabdhani to what is the purpose of indriyas what is the purpose of indriyas it is to illuminate their object isn't it eyes have to illuminate color and form ears have to illuminate the sound tongue has to illuminate or sense the taste nose has to illuminate the fragrance smell skin the touch kon hai bhaiya ha so <coughs> so uh, uh 
so the or the all the sense objects how do you come to know all the sense objects you come to know the sense objects only because you have the sense organs now understand what is happening here are the sense organs which is which are having a particular form which are a part of the body they can also be seen they can also be touched they can also be felt are they not also a sense object <laughs> so it's as if the sense objects have have in their subtle form created the sense organs in order to illuminate themselves see what is made up of what is the world made up made up of all the objects of the world what are they made up of space air fire water earth what are the five senses made up of what are the five senses made up of also space air fire water earth just as for me you are an object a person objective person similarly when i look at myself my indriyas my own eyes are an object of perception for me my ears are object of perception my tongue again <laughs> nose is so this these indriyas they have gone in general the whole world is made up of the five elements those five elements have created the world of objects and in that world of objects these senses are also one so the so the five elements out of which the whole world has come if we would not have been able to perceive this vast world of ob- world of objects if we did not have the five senses so they are mutually existing it's as if and why do we why do our eyes go after beauty why our tongue goes after the gulab jamun why our ears go after the the sound why is it for the gulab jamun or is it for the taste the essence the nectar that is within the gulab jamun are our eyes going after the uh, the the forms or it is perce- it is looking at a form but it is perceiving the beauty of the form you are looking at an ornament but then why don't you wear any ornament ornament is an ornament it's also gold but why only a particular one so what is it that your eyes are going after what is that fragrance there are so many fragrances kisi ko bhi le lo har ek everything is a fra- everything has a fragrance so when we go to sandalwood sand we are not going after the wood what is the attribute of that sandalwood after that we are going the senses are going see and this is an ongoing thing it's continuously going on and on and on and on and on so here it is saying that आर तेभ्य इंद्रिय स्वकार्येभ्यस्ते व्यहते परा परि अर्थ सूक्ष्म प्रत्यगात्मा प्रत्यगात्म अभूता सो इंद्रियज हैव बीन मेड टू इल्युमिनेट द वेरियस ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ परसेप्शन एंड and anyway and therefore uh yeah. therefore uh the they are greater and more expensive than the uh, uh, 
uh, uh, than the objects themselves. Objects do not have the ability to look at themselves. Do the objects have the ability to look at themselves? Can this laptop look at itself? What form I have? What is this laptop made up of? The five elements. What are the eyes made up of? Five elements. Out of which one element may be more predominant. That's a different matter. So therefore, they are more pervasive. Tebhyaha api arthebhyaha cha param sukshma taram Mahat Pratyag Atma Bhutam Cha Manaha More pervasive than the sense objects See, you have, you have to understand the, the game is going of cause and effect What is the cause? What is the cause in the first case? The cause is the five elements. If you didn't have these five senses, would you know the five elements? So five elements out of which the whole objective world is made up of, it is more pervasive than just the five, uh, five senses. You are stuck only with your two eyes and two noses, nostrils and one, two ears and one tongue and skin. But how many are there? <laughs> so the sense objects are more pervasive, more expansive, more greater. Therefore, they are the cause and senses are the effect. Cause is always greater, higher expansive, pervasive and subtler, finer than the effect. Second rule of cause and effect. Effect can never come to know the cause. When the effect tries to search for the cause, it merges with the cause. And it doesn't have an independent identity after that. It cannot. Once the merges back, merges into the, when the river merges into the ocean, it doesn't have an identity. When the wave merges into the ocean, it doesn't have an identity. It becomes the ocean, merges into the ocean. Now its vision is not of an individual. It is that of the total. See, so every effect, first rule, every effect must have a cause. Effect is always many in number, cause is always one. Effect is less pervasive, cause is more pervasive. And therefore, The object, sense objects are more pervasive because they are made out of the five elements. They are more pervasive than the five senses. So therefore, senses are the effect because they are made up of the five elements. They got the grossified form and the five elements out of which the whole world is created. It is much vaster. What is more vaster than the sense object? What is that? Here it says, Tebhya api arthebhyascha param Sukshma taram Sukshma subtler This is the tara tamme bhav Subtler Mahat pratyak atma bhutam chamana The atma of Mahat pratyak atma so, so that which is subtler than the sense objects, which is the Atma of the sense objects, which is greater than the sense objects, 
विदाउट विच सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट हैव गॉट नो पर्पज ओनली दे के नॉट एग्जिस्ट वॉट इज दैट माइंड बिकॉज इन द माइंड द तन मात्राज आर देर इन द माइंड कैन सी द वर्ल्ड विदाउट द ऑब्जेक्टिव वर्ल्ड ऑल्सो इन द ड्रीम यू क्रिएट अ वर्ल्ड आउट ऑफ इट क्रिएट्स अ वर्ल्ड आउट ऑफ इट सेल्फ सो वेर आर द ऑब्जेक्ट देर so all the space air fire water earth mana buddhi chitta ahankar the gross world the, the sensory world the mind everything everything is the mind only it is made there in the dream also you see the senses what are they made up of when you wake up you say oh it was only a figment of imagination of the so mind is more pervasive than the sense objects sukshmataram mahat pratyagatma atma bhutam cha manaha mind is the atma is the essence mind is the essence essence will be pratyagatma mind is mahat mind is greater than and mind is sukshmataram mind is subtler than what is that than the sense objects just like water is the atma of ice water is more pervasive than ice water is subtler than ice but what is ice nothing but water <laughs> like that but you have not we have not worked that out that this whole world which is see, seen her touched felt and tasted what is that world after which our senses are running and out of unintelligent conclusions creating a relationship with the world and remember that part of that world is this body this sense also see it creates a relationship with it what is the need do you create relationship with anyone in the dream there also you had a wife child this that everything where are they do you feel the pain of separation do you feel their loss every day new wife every day new husband every day new child every day new house every day new body <laughs> every day new hairstyle some day you are a man some day one dream you are a man one dream you are a woman you don't complain you don't go after it how come we are going after this world this gross world how come we have concretized it in our in ourselves because of improper conclusions in our life when you come to satsang all your conclusions of life are challenged and when they are challenged some people don't like it so they don't come back some people enjoy the intellectual itch of i oh yeah very nice very interesting really aise bhi hota hai all this is good but i'll continue being who i was what is that father mother daughter sister body mind intellect you will never such people uh, this is the situation of arjuna in the first Five six verses of second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. When Krishna scolds him, "Klebya maga masma partha," don't be an uh, nikam nimkam koop. Don't be important. In Hindi, don't be a hijra. English, don't be a eunuch. and then he surrenders he says shadima am tom prabhu shishya steham shadima i am your disciple i am your 
uh, I'm surrendered at your feet. In the very next verse, he says, but I think whatever I have said in the first chapter that I don't want to fight, I don't want to kill my teacher, I don't want to kill my grandfather, I don't want to kill my cousins, I don't want to go to hell, I don't want to make the, uh, 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 be the cause of so much destruction. And therefore, the conclusion that I came to that I must not fight, I still hold on to it. This is our story. We understand that we are the Atma, but we'll still hold on to the individuality. We we'll still hold on to the body. Holding on to the body means individuality. Holding on to God means maybe there is a possibility of melting away of individuality. If the eyes thinks about its essence, oh, who is me? Who is what? What am I made up of? What is my nature? What is my true nature? I can see my form, but what is the material that I have been made into, made from? And whenever you do focus, whenever you do uh, concentration, heat is generated. The moment heat is generated, the ice cube will start melting. Then what is left behind? Water. And how cu ice cube was only this much. How much is the water now? Once it becomes water, once it melts and merges into the ocean in which it was existing, that iceberg or ice cube, now what is its nature? Infinite. This is our true nature, infinite. But what have we done to our mind? Our mind has identified with one body, one set of senses, one wrong convictions. Hmm. So, Manaha Shabda Vacham, Manasa Arambhakam, Bhuta Sukshmam, Sankalpa Vikalpa Vikalpadi Arambhakatvat. Here it says, Manaha Shabda Vacham, Manasa Arambhakam, Bhut Sukshmam, meaning ki, that this word Mana uh, 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 this mind, the word mind or Mana. itself denotes subtlety, fineness. It is not gross. That it is subtle. Because this is where uh, uh, here it says Sankalpa Vikalpa Adi Arambhakatvat this is the play this is the place the mind is the place where sankalpa vikalpa what is that options options are presented remember we are not talking about buddhi we are talking about mind mind is where options are presented ye khau ke wo khau idhar jaau ke udhar jaau satsang shunu ke nahi shunu should i listen to satsang should i not listen to satsang should i go here or should i go there should I lie down and listen to satsang or should I sit and listen to satsang? How does it matter if I don't listen? I can always listen to it on YouTube afterwards. No decision. <laughs> Only options are presented again and again, again and again. N number of options. You are at a roundabout and so many options are there, you know, like our Springwell Road and uh, uh, 
Springville Road and Princess Highway intersection. Five, six options are there. Is this the road going to Springville? Is this the one going to Clayton? Is this the one going to Dandenong? Oh, oh uh, you come and start, you see five, six different sets of lights and you are in the wrong lane and you <laughs> reach somewhere else. <laughs> see? This is our mind. Full of Sankalpa Vikalpa. Manasaha api para sukshmatara 91-92 Sukshmatara mahattara pratyagatma bhuta cha buddhi Even more pervasive, even more higher, again same words are used, sukshmatara, subtler than Subtler than what? Remember, it is this is the Taratamya. Subtler than. Subtler, subtler than what? Subtler than mind. Sukshmatara. Mahattara. Greater than. Greater than the mind. Pratyagatma Bhuta. The essence of the mind. That which is subtler. That which is greater. That which is more pervasive has to be the essence of mind. So that and what is that which is subtler, greater and more pervasive than the mind? It is called buddhi. Buddhi shabda vacham adhyavasaya Dadi Arambhakam Bhuta Sukshmam and same way by the word Buddhi uh, Buddhi is that uh, is that which is subtler than the mind and and yeah Buddhehe Atma Sarva prani buddhi nam pratyagatma bhuta 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 twad atma mahan sarva mahatvat and subtler, finer, greater, more pervasive than that buddhi. Than that buddhi is the uh, Oh, and not only one buddhi, it is Sarva Prani Buddhi Nam. It is subtler than all the buddhis put together also. What is that? Pratyagatma Bhutatvad Atma Mahan Sarva Mahatvat is the Atma. It is the greater than the greater, greater than all the buddhis put together. So greater than all the objects put, senses put together, the objective world was greater. Greater than the objective world was the mind. Greater than the mind was the buddhi. Greater than the buddhi is the atma. Now same thing I will tell you in a different language. Cause is the objective world which is made up of the five elements. Effect is the senses. Effect can never come to know the cause. Have you ever come to see, have you been able to see the entire world in your life? Any day? It is too vast. You can't, your senses can't reach everything. Has the, have the Sensory sense objects of the world. Can they come to know the mind? In other words, can the senses come to know the mind? They are also sense objects of the world only. Can they come to know the mind? No. Because sense objects or sense uh, senses are uh, uh, effects. Mind is the cause. Can the mind come to know buddhi? No. Mind is sankalpa vikalpa. Option. Too many options. It can never sit still. It is always restless. 
सो इट कैन नेवर कम टू नो द बुद्धि इफ यू टेक द प्ले ऑफ अहम इदम इदम इज ऑलवेज स्ट्रेसलेस माइंड इज ऑलवेज वेकिंग ड्रीम डीप स्लीप वेकिंग ड्रीम डीप स्लीप वेकिंग ड्रीम डीप स्लीप इट कैन नेवर कम टू नो द आई The maximum it comes becomes is a waker, dreamer, sleeper. But who is the I, who knows that these three are coming and going? Can it come to know? No. What to do with all the data that is coming in the mind? Which option to choose? Can the mind by itself choose any of the options? No. You buddhi chooses. Buddhi makes the choice. Buddhi makes the decision. Therefore, it is more pervasive, more powerful, more. greater and all these in whose presence they are all functioning it is the atma so what is the atma of the iceberg water what is the atma of the wave water what is the atma of the ocean water what is the atma of the world self what is the atma of the mind the self what is the atma of the buddhi also the self but if you want to take step by step the atma of the senses will be the sense objects the atma of the sense objects will be the mind atma of this mind will be the buddhi atma of the buddhi will be the effulgent self which illuminates all these which is the cause of all these which is the uh, material of all these just as the water is the material of all the various expressions water alone is the ocean water alone is the wave water alone is the ice so then where is the ocean where is the wave and where is the ice they are just merely there they are phenomenal water alone has become the many oceans ocean it, it alone has become the many waves exactly the same way atma alone as if is perceived as is is expressing as the buddhi is alone expressing as the mind is alone expressing as if the objective sense 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 objects keep applying it on yourself right now not just intellectually don't try to work out see it happening right now if you come to the correct conclusion you will vanish buddhehe atma sarva prani buddhi nam pratyag atma bhut bhutatvad आत्मा महान सर्व महत्वा अव्यक्तादि अव्यक्तादि तत्प्रथम जात हैरण्यगर्भम तत्व बोधा बोध बोध अबोधात्मक महान आत्मा बुद्धे पर उच्यते so that atma is the ultimate it is the greater it is the it is greater than the buddhi also a uh, meaning this is we are talking only from relative standpoint ha huh? so what is that we are only at the my uh, atmic we are talking talking here about this atma what is that which is the material cause as well as the efficient cause of all this that you have just seen so here it says that 
that, that it is unmanifest that that this atma is unmanifest this atma is the hiranyagarbhatatva hiranyagarbhatatva means that point that expression of the reality where all possibilities are in their unmanifest form that is hiranyagarbha it is that point where here it says uh, where are we where are we ha huh. avyakt avyaktaadi prathamam jatam hiranyagarbha tattvam bodha abodhatmakam mahanatma means it is that where gyan and kriya ha huh? knowledge and action these are two opposing things knowledge is constant kriya is uh, kriya is continuous kriya means movement knowledge no movement atma is the knowledge see both are present so what is this hiranyagarbha hiranyagarbha is that where gyan knowledge and action movement both are present in their unmanifest form uh, 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 yeah and that is uh, and that which is beyond uh, knowing and unknowing bodha abodha but uh, abodhatmak that is uh, that that atma is greater than the buddhi so when we look at we when we when we talk about that we have to have we have to come to the self we have to come to the self is this self other than that what is being talked about here we think according to vedanta there are no individual atmas meaning according to vedanta there is no individual water behind every wave there is only one water behind every wave similarly there is only one atma behind all living beings so what is the the fall the parabrahma parmatma as if desired the moment he became aware of his potentiality he is called <clears throat> he is called ishwara ishwara's ishwara is called with reference to potentiality that potentiality that shakti when it expands manifests the first manifestation is hiranyagarbha from hiranyagarbha the first form that comes out is called virat in that virat there is one buddhi there is one mind there are the five senses in that one virat the entire universe is imagined living and inert in that virat virat means that which is most expansive that one we have given a form we have given a but we we keep thinking that we are individual i will attain realization i'll come to myself i went into my meditation i think i have realized myself i came to know myself but when he opens his eyes he sees, still sees the world but is living in this uh, 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 wrong imagination that he was merged into the self merging into the self means 
merging into the infinite, into the total being, into the total being. Have we merged into the total being? Because once you merge into the total being and come out consciously, huh? every deep sleep, every night you go into the Hiranyagarbha, the unmanifest, total unmanifest. But you don't know it. Therefore, the world is still present when we wake up. But when we go consciously and everything collapses back into its source, we don't come to only one, this Atma. This is Sankhya Yoga. One Atma per, per person. If I am realized, you are not realized. Then Lagero. Argue karte raho, that I am greater than you guys. Because I, I realized myself, you didn't realize that. Eh, Bekuf. No. When you realize, when one realizes, everything is realized. When you wake up, everyone in your dream also woke up because they were not there on, in the one first place. In other words, you alone were expressing as all in the dream. So when you woke up, they have, everyone else in the dream has no choice because they are you alone. Same thing will happen when in the waking also. When you wake up, to your own reality the world as you know it cannot exist thereafter <clears throat> i'll explain this all to you in another way but let's finish this first bodha bodhatmakam mahan atma buddhe para iti uchyate so, uh, that it is uh, both uh, knowing and unknowing. It is beyond. Where is knowing and not knowing? Where is knowledge and ignorance? It is in the buddhi. I know, I don't know. Buddhi, bodha, abodha. Pare is the atma. Atma is unaffected by knowing or not knowing. Atma is of the no nature of knowledge. See, this is the 10th verse, 10th and 11th go together. So what does this 10th also say? The 10th also says that when we are looking at the world of objects, are we looking at the objects or are we looking at something behind the objects? Are we looking at the Gulab Jamun or are we looking at the pleasure that we are going to get after eating that Gulab Jamun? Is that pleasure and the Gulab Jamuns are different types. Huh? Some By looking only you can make out it's a soft succulent one or it is the, the chashni, the sugar syrup has not soaked into the gulab jamun. You can see it from the color only from the top. You can feel it by touching. Little bit touch and you know. Some people can just by looking at it, they can come to know. Experts I'm telling. See? <clears throat> so, Senses do not ob do not realize what are you looking at? You are looking at objects. Are you if each object in the world is made up of only the five elements, are you seeing the five elements out there behind every object? Are you able to see the five elements behind every object? Or you are seeing only the objects? You are seeing only the form.
the ears are hearing the sound are you seeing the space the quality of space is sound are you seeing the space you are hearing the sound it is the movement of air which makes the sound are you seeing the air are you feeling the air if it is stand still atmosphere still sound is traveling are you able to see no so why do our why do we run after the objects because we ourselves are lacking in something therefore we want to be complete and to bring about that completion we run after the objects <clears throat> thinking that there is something behind these objects which we ourselves are lacking <clears throat> and therefore when we look at it this way that continuously we want to we want to watch tv we want to keep doing something we want to keep uh, imagining something we want to keep relating to something we want to keep remembering something we want to take out our old photographs wo bhi jaane kahan gaye wo din oh how beautiful and we ruminate over those memories why do we ruminate ruminate over those memories why do we run after the food again and again and again why don't we get satiated in one go because we are going after some essence we are not going after the object we want to be fulfilled and what is going to fulfill you if object was able to fulfill you then you should keep eating the gulab jamun till no end but do you do that no there is something lacking in us therefore we are indulging therefore we are seeking to be complete by uh, grasping the objects by seeing hearing touching feeling tasting and how long does it last how long does that fulfillment last only for few seconds sometimes only for a moment and immediately after that uh, next object next experience next interaction next movie next serial what next we all want fulfillment we all want completion but where outside we enjoy the color taste sound etc etc so we have to bring a distinction between uh, objects and their qualities or their essences and in this way uh, or the substance uh, the, the 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 subtle essences hidden in the objects are superior to them the taste of gulab jamun is greater than gulab jamun the beauty of a person is greater than the form the beauty of a ornament is greater than the form of the necklace where is this beauty where is this enchantment where is this uh, this this uh, taste it is more pervasive than that object object is only this much <clears throat> so 
So as we said, the senses do not want the object, but the, the attributes or the characteristics, the essence hidden in the objects. This is what a mother feels when she hugs her child. It's just one object, one form. But what is she feeling? That feeling is beyond. <clears throat> so, so these, so these objects, the sensory objects, they are only vehicles which are holding the uh, 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 holding the essence. And that essence is what we are seeking. We are not seeking the objects. We are seeking the essence. And therefore, uh, we use the objects for our satisfaction. Understand this game that is going on. We utilize the objects for our satisfaction and therefore if you observe in your life right now we are utilizing the objects for our satisfaction and that is that wrong involvement is making us restless because we are thinking only by food, I will be satisfied. Only by relationship, I will be satisfied. Only by wealth, I will be satisfied. Only by travel, I will be satisfied. Only by reading, I will be satisfied. Only by listening, I will be satisfied. Only by this type of music, I will be satisfied. And in this way, we, we, uh, there is this restlessness within us which urges us to keep, to remain in motion. One object after next, after next object, then next object, then next object. There is no end to it. <clears throat> and we are continuously, sometimes we are seeking it with, with what we see, then we seek it from what we hear, then it is what we taste, from what we touch. Sometimes it's uh, by, by imagination. We keep moving from one object to the other. Hoping, seeking, wanting, desiring the satisfaction. So are we going after the objects? No. We are going after the satisfaction that it provides us. So that object is only a vehicle. A Maruti 500 will also take you to your destination and a Mercedes or Rolls Royce will also take you to your destination. Then why don't you buy Maruti 500? <laughs> because Rolls Royce gives me the satisfaction. I have the capacity to get it. satisfaction <clears throat> and therefore we keep changing from one object to the other object from one object to the other object and it, this goes on and on and it is not you only the whole world is doing this seeking satisfaction seeking completion from what temporary objects of the world the sense objects of the world. Have we gone to its essence? No. We haven't gone. And this is the mistake we are making in our life. Until this mistake is not corrected, fulfillment will not be possible. A realization will not be possible. As long as the senses keep running after the objects, 
सेल्फ कंट्रोल विल नॉट हैपन इंट्रोवर्टेड इनर जर्नी विल नॉट बिगिन थिंक एंड दस वी सी अवर होल लाइफ इज अ लाइफ ऑफ एक्टिविटी our life is not of existence our life is about activity existence doesn't go anywhere existence does not come and go activity comes and goes thought word and deed come and go waking dream and deep sleep come and go memories come and go regrets come and go expectations come and go your body has come and gone every day it is coming and going every cell in your body is coming and going everything that you are seeing from morning till today till this moment so many forms have colors have come and gone so many sounds have come and gone so many smells have come and gone so many tastes have come and gone have you come and gone you always talk about something has come and gone so we are never never focused on the existence which has never come and gone we are focused on objects which have come and gone and through that vehicle of those objects we are trying to catch some satisfaction sensory satisfaction and this is the loop this is the wrong approach this is the suicide that every individual is committing as they are living their life and thus we create a relationship with someone thinking this will satisfy us so we become husband and wife then for some days you are happy then one child comes then you feel that this child will give us happiness after that your donkey years begin 20 pehle to sir before it was only 20 years of donkey years now it has extended to 30 40 years because their studies don't finish till 40 they are sitting staying at home and working they are studying you, you have to cater so what happens you are the existence enslaved by the senses and senses are only seeking fulfillment in the objects that object is a woman you the existence became a husband then you became a father then you became a grandfather at the body level you became the seer you became the hearer toucher feeler taster you became the waker dreamer sleeper so we are continuously becoming and becoming and becoming and becoming but never being therefore it is a paramount necessity that we understand this analogy of the chariot and come to understand that our wrong approach can keep us in the loop of becoming fulfillment is becoming is temporary being is permanent this journey how will it come about how will this transformation from becoming to being come about that is what we are talking about for that purpose this these two verses we have just looked at the 10th one 
इंद्रिय व्यपराह्य ही अर्थ अर्थेभ्य परम मन मनसस्तु परा बुद्धि बुद्धे आत्मा महान परा साउंड वेरी सिंपल ओ दिस इज ग्रेटर देन दैट दैट इज सटलर देन दैट दैट इज मोर परवेजिव देन दैट दिस इज द थॉट बिहाइंड हाउ वी आर हुड विंकिंग अवर सेल्स मीनिंग फूलिंग अवर सेल्स सो वी आर ओनली बिकमिंग बिकमिंग एंड नॉट बींग आवर होल लाइफ is only full of activity but not existence being means existence being means being a constant existence is constant just like this laptop is this book is this table is this i am you are world is what is the common in all this is is the common word but we are using all objects our attention is on the objects our attention is not on the isness i am you are we say it, but our attention is not on the constant principle our attention is on the changing principle our attention is on the changing principle only when we are living when we have taken the object objective world to be the atma meaning through the objective world i will get satisfaction such a person is living in a fool's world he will never get it but look look that positively this this uh, urge to act this intention to act to be in movement to be in search to be to wanting to be fulfilled this desire for fulfillment which is propelling us into activity uh, throughout our life that there is something that we are searching something that we are moving towards something that we want to become one with apparently we have not but we are wanting some fulfillment we want <clears throat> just like a just like a, a river it starts from the mountains uh, keeps going up down turning twisting going over the rocks going deeper into the earth why is it why are you running oh, oh ganga ganga ji why are you running oh i have to become i this incessant movement this incessant movement of ganga ji it it concludes only when it reaches the destination once it reaches the destination of ganga sagar thereafter no movement it is infinite you are also searching for that infinite but where are you searching you are searching through the senses in this objective world look kabada ho gaya but as i said positively it's a good it's a good boon that we have that this continuous movement this continuous urge this continuous activity this continuous momentum that we have in our life is an indication that we want to reach somewhere we want something we want 
you call it fulfillment, peace, tranquility. But are we getting it? Have we got it for last 30, 40, 50, 60 years? Because you have been searching for it in the same place, in the objective world, in the sense objects. From this restaurant to that restaurant, from this property chart to that property chart, from this Faluda to that Faluda. Have we got it? Until unless we don't realize, we don't invoke our intelligence. Remember the charioteer. Unless and until we do not invoke our intelligence to see that not only we are continuously moving, every object is moving. Every object comes into creation, goes out of existence. Every moment comes, it goes away and gives way to the next moment. In other words, not only I am continuously moving or changing or in activity, activity, birth, death, everything in this world is changing. That which is changing is not permanent. That which is changing is transient. Transient means changing. Intransient means changeless. Recognize this. What around you? Oh, that mountain was before me. The mountain is and it will continue to be after I die also. But my mountain is also crying. That every time the sun comes, I become dry. Then the rain comes, all the dust on me is washed away by the... Then the earthquake comes, it shakes me up and I break up. A little bit by little bit. Over a million years. It becomes only a hillock. From a huge mountain, it becomes a hillock. You may not, for your lifetime is very limited compared to the mountain's lifetime. But change is there, continuous change. And that is, that is the transiency of the world. That is the restlessness of the world. The, you are restless, the world is restless. Restlessness means continuous change. Are you running after the world? You will never come to rest. So, in other words, the world is continuously in motion. The world is continuously active, in activity. <coughs> dream is activity, waking dream, deep sleep, continuous activity. Within the waking, so much activity. Within the dream, so much activity. Take waking dream, deep sleep, everyday activity. Take day and night, continuous activity. Take the seasons, continuous activity. Take the body, birth, growth, disease, decay, death, again activity, movement. Child, teenage, youth, middle age, old age, again activity. Breath, activity. Blood flow, activity. Health, ill health, 
activity, movement. <laughs> catch this principle and catch that we are, we have accepted ourselves to be this body and if we are only attracted by the world, that which is continuously moving and our senses are attracted to it, is going to be a miserable existence. No fulfillment. Temporary, yes. But it has its own consequences. And this continuous movement, this continuous change itself is the imperfection of the world. Constancy, changelessness is perfection. Changing, transient, continuous movement, the restlessness of the world, the world in motion, the world in activity. This is it, this itself is the imperfection. And we are running after the imperfection to be perfect. How? What logic? Therefore, everywhere, it, all the sadhanas, first control the senses, then control the mind, then sit in one place, then focus on something. They don't say meditate. We want, nowadays we want to meditate, meditate, meditate. Meditate is not the, uh, is not the means. Meditation is the result. You live your life correctly, meditation will automatically happen. But we want meditation as we do meditation as the means to be more productive in life. Totally upside down we have taken the whole thing. I do meditation, I feel less stressed. I do meditation, uh, the, uh, I, I feel light. Our approach is interact with the world in such a way that you don't get stressed, that you don't, you feel, you don't take the load. Not taking the load is lightness. That will automatically lead to meditation. So I understand, calm waters have no waves, calm waters have no waves. The moment there is movement in water, waves appear. So wherever there is, what did we say, the world in motion, wherever there is movement, wherever there is, what is that, velocity, wherever there is speed, there the, uh, that speed gives the appearance of the objects. The speed of the water gives the appearance of a whirlpool. The movement of the water brings about the appearance of the wave. The movement of the wind brings about the sound and the, uh, the touch. You can feel it against your skin and you can hear the sound. 
so it is this speed it is this this movement which is bringing about the appearance you calm your mind because the whole world is known by you only by way of thoughts you quiet on your mind stop this the the movement of thoughts what can i do if the eyes are open i have closed the eyes so now no color and form are coming but the sounds are coming okay put uh, ear plugs no sounds are able to enter oh but i can still smell okay put two more corks corks in in your nostrils now no smell is coming when you do that ting mm mm close all of them how long can you do that only for some time oh we'll do it try this is the brahmari mudra <clears throat> so now you understand if you understand this example what i'm giving you that the movement brings about the appearance of objects by way of wave whirlpool etc etc same way movement of the five elements is bringing about the appearance of the sense objects when you vibrate something this is all science already has done that that when you vibe move some object fast enough it will convert into energy and energy converts itself into mass they are both it keeps changing so in so when we say that there is movement and the, the, that that the, that the, that the things do not exist in themselves but they are continuously passing through 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 this world the river is continuously passing over the river bed there is you can't say this is the river by the time you say this is the river the river, that amount of water is already gone so it's not the same water that you are calling the river i am me by the time you say it you have already so many millions of cells have died and already new ones are born see catch this catch this catch this in your in in your life and this is holding on to that which cannot be held holding on to the appearance which is not permanent you cannot hold a wave you cannot hold a memory you cannot hold a person my child parents say my child my put to my kid to but the child has become to you 50 60 70 year old man the mother is still my put to my put to my put to still considering it, that person to be the only the memory my baby that is what is creating the unhappiness that's not joy because that 70 year old whose mother is 90 year old and she is saying my puttu my kuttu he is saying to his mom mummy grow up i have less hair my all my hair are gone my beard has become white and you are still caught up in the memory of when 
my son who 70 year old when he was small pathetic embarrassing and when that 70 year old reprimands or says something to his mother then unhappiness she thought she was oh, oh, she was accessing joy fulfillment through that interaction of her son remember she is not the son but what the essence behind the son is the existence the attribute the quality the essence but she is not going after that searching for fulfillment outside we can never be fulfilled so how do we turn from outside to inside this is the way this is i'm just taken the first part we haven't even come to the mind yet first recognize the ephemerality of the world and this change in this world is because of its restlessness the change in this world is because of continuous movement which is giving the appearance of the various objects the movement of space air fire water earth mixed together they are moving so fast that objects are appearing they are interacting with each other so fast that the objects are appearing <coughs> and therefore if we observe our life if we are unhappy if we are unfulfilled it is only because we haven't reached the destination the river has reached its destination so it is fulfilled it doesn't have a desire to become a river again it's merged it loses its identity whereas in our case in our river of life that this yeah, equipment that has is making us go through have we reached the destination like the river has our destination is multi pointed through the five senses the whole world it can never lead to fulfillment it can never lead to consummation it can never lead to fulfillment now correct correct this wrong approach this is what these two mantras are telling us 10 and 11 a raindrop falls on the mountain it becomes a stream the stream becomes a rivulet the rivulet becomes a, a river the river goes and joins the bigger river and eventually it merges into the ocean what is after ocean <laughs> is there some other place to go after the ocean ocean is content within itself as itself now 
904 I am blabbering I'm, we'll look at it we'll continue thinking in these lines in our next class on this verse itself when we come to the next one we'll come to it <laughs> om purnamada purnamidam purnaat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hi hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om sit quietly for a moment